die! Hi, I'm Amber de Mundo, you one and only man of world. And this is the Zelda Universe podcast. Is it? Special CDI edition. What? It always is. It always is? So, as you can tell, we have um, Josh Jepsen Hi, here. folks. And uh, we also have another very special guest for this, uh, for CDI month. My boy, this podcast is what all true warriors strive for. <laughs> Indeed, it's it's King Harkinian himself from the CDI games of uh, Wand of Gamelon and Faces of Evil. Pleasure to be here, my boy. <laughs> you were not present in Celis uh, Adventure, right? They did not deem me worthy to be in that game, which is a horrible mistake on their part, I think. Mm. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, so we today we are going to talk about the Wii U sell the game, and we're going to talk about it in a very uh, particular way, because as we all know, Nintendo isn't doing all too well with their Wii U console. And a lot of people have said that what they, what Nintendo really can do at this point, you know, let's skip the whole, you know, we skip the entire argument of, oh, they should just discontinue the Wii U and start over, or, oh, that's they should start making games for the 360 and PS4. I mean, that's, th that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I, I have not heard anyone suggest, which I think is also, a, a, this is a great idea, that they should start making games for the Philips CDI again. <laughs> <laughs> that will um... sell so many copies. <laughs> you have no idea. It would be idea. an amazing thing. <laughs> I'm looking forward yeah, to it already, um, and it hasn't even happened yet. <laughs> yeah, so apart from that, what what can Nintendo do to make people interested in buying, and also for developers to develop games for the Wii U? Well, I mean... So, obviously, like, we're looking for some sort of killer app, right? Like, how can Nintendo make a game that utilizes a gamepad in a good way to make people care about the console itself. Yeah, that's it. That that's their key thing right there is the people don't like the gamepad as much as they they had hoped. And if they make it hmm. you know like like sell it kind of like they did with the with the original DS with the touch screen. Um you know, maybe at first people were kind of put off by the fact that they have to use a stylus and there's two screens and a touch screen, but then they realize, "Oh, there's so many cool implications." Except that they're not using the gamepad yeah. for any of those cool implications. Yeah, it, it feels a bit, and, and also, I always point out this when we have this discussion, that I think the gamepad would have been a great addition to the Wii U console if it would have been um, able to run, like, four gamepads on one console. Like, if the gamepad was a standard console, and you could have four ga gamepad controllers, right. but at this time, you can So, a lot of games that aren't single-player they have to develop their games to function both with the gamepad and with the Wii remotes. Right. Yeah. And so I, I, I feel like there's a lot of potential that kind of goes wasted. Well, yeah, I mean, because uh, the, the console doesn't come with a Wii controller. So unless you have a Wii or a Wii controller separate, you're going to miss out on a lot of multiplayer games. Right. Yeah. So what what I really think they they need to do is... Like we said, they need to make one sort of uh, killer app, like Zelda, for right. instance. I think Zelda and Metroid would be the the games to really oh, yeah. be able to to showcase. Before we even but talk Metroid... about software, though, I think if they're really going for interactivity, maybe they need to make their compact discs interactive too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how you would make a compact disc more interactive than it is already you want to play fetch but, uh, with your dog is that what you're getting at <laughs> so i'll take one of those cdi games and play fetch that should be fun <laughs> it would probably be better than the games themselves anyway hey <laughs> i that that is fighting words right there sir you take that back <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's true. I will. I, I, lo I love your games, King Harkini. Well, thank you. I don't. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, I think that they need to have this sort of... That they need to really show that they can make a Zelda game that has, that has content or functionality that no other Zelda game has had before 
and that no other platform can truly achieve in the same. I, I, I think I have an idea here for oh, you. Oh well, I maybe gonna... maybe they should have a game where Zelda goes on an adventure, and maybe <laughs> we could call it Zelda's Adventure. Zelda's Adventure. Hmm. And, and then maybe we could have a sequel to that, which would be Link to the Adventure of Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. You're selling copies already. I, that's what I'm here, to solve Hyrule's problems. Oh, yeah. okay. Because you already solved Gamelon's problems. Clearly. I want to ask the two of you. Okay. If you could make sort of any, any kind of Zelda games you want... Aside from having Zelda as a playable character in Zelda's Adventure Link, the faces of two, <laughs> what what would you, how would that game be? Like, how would you come up with well. a game for the Wii U, a Zelda game, that would be so awesome that people would be interested in the Wii U? Well, console? a moment ago, I had an idea. I had an idea. Hmm. I was thinking, because like you said before, we, they need to utilize the gamepad more, and gamepad is just a big touchscreen. Um, I think it would be kind of cool to do, to have combat segments in a Zelda game where you can slash using the touchscreen in different directions and different movements and stuff. I think that would kind of add to it. It wouldn't necessarily have to be like a full fledged Zelda game. It could be something like, um, crossbow training or something like a download, uh, title where it, maybe mm. it's, uh, not necessarily, I was gonna say first person, yeah. but that would be kind of weird. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I feel like the idea itself isn't bad, but th that's sort game. of also... Yeah, that's exactly what I was yeah. going to say. It was gonna, I feel like it would be maybe, like, a bit gimmicky. Well, I am not a game developer, would... sir. <laughs> it's, not my, it's not my job to make these games interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay, then, then I can say, but it is mine, so... <laughs> um, <laughs> if, if I was to make a game... I, I'm sort of looking back to the early trailers of the Wii U. Remember Zombie U? Oh, yeah. Where they would mm -hmm. use the gamepad as sort of like a scanner thingy? Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and, I mean, that that feels like it would fit Metroid much better. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, for sure. But I'm wondering if there's something you can, you can do like that with Zelda. Like, mm. maybe you could have... Like maybe you can have the gamepad, and the gamepad would hold. Uh, it would be like an interface with like kind of like a compass. Mm -hmm. So like if you had a big maze sort of like area, and you could use the gamepad in your compass to sort of navigate it with a map and like truly do some. Because I I've done orienting. Have you done orienting? I don't have any idea what that is. Uh, it's where it's going on an around. adventure, sir. Oh, okay. Pretty much that, yeah. So you run around in the forest, and you have a map, and you have a compass. And on the on the map, you have a bunch of locations, and you want to go to all these locations and put a stamp on your on your car to like prove that you've been to oh, okay. that location. So basically, you uh, you run to all these locations as fast as possible, in whichever order you right. want. And, and your only way to find those is you have a map and you have a compass. And you know where you're starting at. And then you have to navigate using those two so tools. So you're thinking that if they did something like that with Zelda, where you have those tools on your gamepad and you then utilize them to get around the world yeah. and, and and solve... Um... I think it could work just because here's the thing. Like with a compass... I don't know how familiar you are with the compass, <laughs> but they point to north, right? Uh, I had no this is news to me. This is yeah. News to me. Um, but so basically, when you have a map and, and orienting, what what you want to do is because you run around in all sorts of different directions, and you always want the map to align with the compass, so that when you hold a map and then you turn ninety degrees, you want to rotate the map. So that it still aligns with the compass, and that's something I feel could be done with the gamepad. Like you rotate the gamepad as you turn in different directions. I don't know. Maybe this is a bit gimmicky too, but I feel like that's like that would actually be a very unique kind of thing they could do. Ombre, if they actually, you, you have just blown my mind because I'm still back in the age of side scrollers, and I don't know what this fancy technology of compasses <laughs> and maps are. 
<laughs> we just had the overworld map, and you went from face to face to face of evil, and just beat the boss and moved on. This this blows my mind. Yeah, you're a little bit behind the times it, there. <laughs> the the times back then were good times. <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, it might not be like mainstream. That's the thing. Like a lot of these kinds of advanced gamepad interfaces might not be that easy to get. I mean, a side scroller is easy to get. You move from left to right. And and you hit the Dodongos with the bombs, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and you get it, but but this might be a bit more. But here's the thing: I'm I'm sort of coming at this from an angle where, you know how when every every console sells the game, and the rumor starts to appear, you always hear the same: "Oh, this is going to be the biggest Hyrule ever," like yeah. and it's going to be like Skyrim. Yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> when that day comes, <laughs> I tell you what, boy. Maybe we need to just ditch Hyrule altogether and go back to maybe Gamelon or mm. someplace like that. <laughs> yeah, I you know you you brought up you brought up the word gimmicky a couple of times and I brought it up too. Yeah, and I think that is the challenge: is getting something that doesn't feel like you know, like I try it once, oh, okay. that's kind of cool, and then you'd never use it again. Yeah, I, I mean. And, and this is something that I think they did really well with the link between worlds. You know, they had the whole merchant to wall mechanics. And when you first saw it, you think, okay, well, this is a bit of a gimmick, right? right? But then you play the game, and it's so integrated with the, with the entire game, and it feels so natural, and it's it's perfect. Yes. Yeah. So they need to to do something that feels just as right as it, merging into the, walls. The, I think the most important thing is that it needs to feel natural. Whatever you do with the gamepad... Yeah in association with the TV, it needs to feel natural from one screen to another, which is what they had with the DS, right? It always felt smooth and natural, transitioning between the yeah. two screens. And, and I love the thing that they did in Phantom Hourglass because they did they had so many uh, very innovative uses of the... Even though you know, Phantom Hourglass, it wasn't an, an amazing game. It was a good game, but it wasn't an amazing game as far as solid games go. But they did a lot of nice that. stuff with the... <laughs> Well, but it did a lot of nice yeah. stuff with the dual screen. For instance, remember the the time where you had to just close I was going to bring that up when you were maps. done talking. Yeah, when you close the DS and yeah. stamp the the map. That was yeah, great. that was that was genius. And the things like writing little uh, like you can draw on the maps yeah. and make your own little notes, um, and and also things like the bosses. You know, you remember that crab boss that was invisible. Oh right, yeah, and yeah. you could you could see it from its point of view. Oh yeah, yeah. On one of the screens, that was an amazing boss fight, and I'm thinking, I mean, there has to be things like that that they can do with the gamepad. Yeah, um, I, I I think I think you're right, and I think the next Zelda game on the Wii U will be that. Will have elements of that, uh, like you said, the drawing on the maps and. Uh, basically, I think a lot of interaction with maps and. Uh, like your item interface and everything, they're gonna figure it out, yeah. and it's gonna be awesome on the gamepad. Whether or not there's actual, whether or not it actually makes the gamepad hold ground, I don't know. But mm. uh, it is definitely a good portal for having all of that information, like off the TV. Yeah. Though I don't even know why you'd need to have an interface on a second screen. We did totally fine back then of hitting the start button just to bring up your inventory screen. We didn't even have a start button on the Phillips. You had to duck and hit the button to do that. <laughs> that was totally a great idea. <laughs> you, you work with the least amount of buttons possible and then... It was it was available to everyone. It was so easy. You didn't have to have all of these buttons to confuse the world. Now you have controllers with you have to like claw your hands on this thing just to play it. It confuses the heck out of me. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I think we maybe have hit upon an idea here, and I'm curious to see if this is the direction Nintendo's going. Like I said, with maps and and like. I said earlier with compasses, mm -hmm. you could do a lot with the gamepad with, yeah, maps and directions, and maybe instead of getting a, a compass that lets you, I'm, I'm playing uh, Oracle of um, Seasons right okay. now, 
and, and I know that in that game and other Zelda games, when you get the compass, you get to see where the treasures are. Yeah. Excuse me, which game? On the map. Which game are you uh, playing? Oracle of Ages. I don't know this game. What are you talking about? <laughs> um... It doesn't exist yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, clearly, it's not on We're any system the I know. Yeah, I think it was on a very obscure system that didn't hit the mainstream. Oh, like in, oh, only okay. in Japan or something. I understand now. Yeah, I think you understand more than most. <laughs> yeah. Excuse um, me, what are you talking about? I no, nah, <laughs> nothing, man. Okay, so like I think maybe instead of having an item that that just shows you on the map where all the treasure is. Maybe instead you'll get people telling you um, the treasure is located and th they'll they describe the location and then maybe on the gamepad you can like zoom in on the different maps and you can look around and be like oh yeah that's the place it's probably talking about. And, and, and then, then you, you can make your own and you can make markings. your own mark. Yeah, the kind of like they did with Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, right? There was a number of places where yeah. Uh, I mean, because you could get the compass and reveal all the chests, but uh, there was a number of cases where, and uh, you know, somebody in the dungeon would just describe a location of something, and you would then have to write down on the map. I really like that stuff. I really do, and I hope that they do integrate that into yeah. the next one. Yeah, no, and I think that was one of the like that was one of the best things of both the DS games, both uh, Final Fantasy and yeah. Spirit Jets, where you did get to make your own notes, because there will be other things like little side quests and stuff like that. Well, people will mention, like, they'll give you a clue or, like, an, a number in orders. Yeah. And instead of remembering it, you, you can write it down right on your, like, on your map or something. Right, yeah. And it helps you remind, it helps remind you of stuff. Because um, I, I remember, I actually, there was one time, I wrote something down on uh, one of the maps of the dungeons. And I think when you leave the dungeon, it, it, ke it keeps all the stuff from your map, I believe, when you return to the dungeon. I don't know. Um, Maybe. And it was something that I had forgotten at some point. So... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It, it's stuff like that. We used paper back then. That worked totally fine, and it would never lose anything that you wrote down on it. Oh, you would have yeah. to physically crumble it up and throw it in the bin before you would ever lose <laughs> data on paper. That's true. But people nowadays, they don't want to deal with paper. Like you have Save to the trees! The paper. Yeah, and you would have to go find a pen... And then you try it, and like you, you know, you have an ink pen, and it doesn't work. And you have to find another oh. pen. And oh, that wasn't sharpened. You know, you it's... sharpen your pens. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, sir. <laughs> that's the problem. That's that's where you went wrong, my boy. Yeah, that's that's true. That might be that might be my fault. <laughs> see, see, this is what you're doing wrong, Ombre. This is what you're doing yeah. wrong. Uh, yeah. That's why you need this newfangled technology. You wasted all of your good pens. Hey, hey, <laughs> he's selling me on this on this CDI game. I'm I'm telling you right now. Yeah. Looking yeah. better and better so... as time goes on. Sorry, <laughs> go on. <laughs> but it feels. I don't think yeah. people imagined the faces of evil and Wand of Gamelon when they came out. <laughs> And well, they, they probably did. And what did they get? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's for yeah. sure. Unless they they totally blow our minds with, with something really unique and different. I think that they either, they're either they either going to have to do something like that. Something that kind of harkens back to the, the DS games. Yeah. Or the CDI or, games. Or the CDI games. Right. Or they're going to... Or... You know, maybe, unfortunately, they're going to come up with something that's just pretty gimmicky, like, oh, well, you have Navi, and whenever she says, hey, you can put up your gamepad to the screen and target the thing that you want to know more about. Yeah, like, that wouldn't fly. Okay. Like, it, it would be neat, maybe, a little bit, if it worked of anything like scanning in, in uh, Metroid Prime. Right. Which was awesome, by that the way. would be cool if Zelda had something like that, where if you like you had yeah. Navi and if you maybe, maybe like if you were anywhere in the world, it, Navi wouldn't have to say anything. But if you had Navi and whenever you held mm -hmm. the the gamepad up to the screen, Navi would like fly into the middle of the screen and like target onto whatever you're looking at. And there could be things that you yeah. like quote unquote scan. You wouldn't scan them obviously, but you'd look at them and observe right. them and you'd get information on on things. I think that would be really cool. Yeah. 
Maybe instead of just scanning, you should hit your sword into people and they would talk to you. (laughs) That's that's also a good possibility. I don't know how that would... How would you implement that with the gamepad? Like, maybe jab the gamepad towards the screen. I just... Seems a good idea to me. It just seems so (laughs) rude. (laughs) It's a magic sword. It knows the difference. It's a smart sword. It's a smart sword. That's actually what it is. So that when the person using it is is an idiot, they can still hit things with it. (laughs) You know, just in case. You can never be too careful. No. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So... I think maybe they could do something like that. That would be actually really neat. Because there are a lot of things in Zelda that you actually want to know more about. And not just enemies. Because the enemy thing... Uh, they started that in Ocarina of Time, mm-hmm. right? When they started telling you what all the enemies were. And then were. they sort of stopped. I think they picked it up again in Twilight Princess. But then they really kind of just... It trailed off. Well... The, yeah. I mean, they did it in Wind Waker. But you like you had to take a picture of them. And then go to the... Oh, right. Yeah. The, the miniature guy. And then you could view information... Yeah, but yeah, and they did it again with Twilight Princess, I yep. think, and they also had it in uh, Skyward Sword. But um, I mean, Five was kind of annoying. I, ne- I never, I rarely did. I didn't even Skyward know they had it in Skyward Sword. Five I'm gonna was be like, honest. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, because Five is just you know she she wants to talk to you. Like as soon as Five pops up, you're like shut up, and you don't want to you know. That's like how it is with Ganon sometimes, actually. <laughs> As soon as he pops up, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> it, um, but I, yeah, I, I think something like that would be nice because there are a lot of things in Zelda that you want to know more about. Like some temples, especially I think in Ocarina of Time, they had really interesting sort of temples, like the uh, the Shadow Temple and the Spirit. It temple. would be a great way to. Um, delve deeper into like uh, like the timeline and the backstory to yeah. all of the Zelda games, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you, you see a statue, right? You see a big statue of a thing and you, you know, it doesn't have any gameplay functionality. You just, just look at it and it's cool. Show. Show. Yeah. Uh, so it's more like a, it's a it's a dramatic yeah. element meant to like create atmosphere and stuff. So, and you can scan it and it says something like, Oh, this statue looks like it's uh, too conklin. It's, it's a, <laughs> it's a, yeah, <laughs> this looks like to be a statue of Duke Conklin. And, uh, maybe he was a previous ruler of these, these lands. Maybe that's what he will say. Never, never a previous ruler. He's just, <laughs> he's a Duke, not a King. Jeez. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Don't want to step that's on any true. toes here. Yeah, but I mean, you know, they might retcon it. <laughs> there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. So, I feel like if they actually did insert "quote unquote" scanning into Zelda Wii U, the gamepad would actually serve its purpose. Because if you remember in uh, Metro Prime, when you went into scanning mode, you couldn't shoot or anything. Right. But I feel like with the scanning, all you would have to do is put the gamepad up, hold it up against the TV, and then you could scan. And you could still just look over the gamepad right. and still see the TV and just look back down. Well, well, I mean, what it could be, too, is like, um, like you said, Zombie U. Because when you held the gamepad mm-hmm. up and you looked around with Zombie U, you could see everything on the gamepad. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I use. I haven't. I haven't played the game a lot. I I tried a, like a few demos of it, and I didn't like it. And then I stopped paying attention. Well, to that it. So, well that uh, feature specifically was actually pretty alright. But um, you mentioned Metroid Prime before, and one thing that I noticed yeah. with Metroid Prime, it's just exactly what we're talking about, but without the gamepad, mm-hmm. because you lift the Wii remote up and you point it at the screen, and that's how you you scan stuff, right? Am I am I wrong yeah. about this? Well, and you have to switch vices. Well, yeah, you have that's to switch. But you know what I mean. Like you have to. You, yeah, but like with the gamepad, if it would react to you know you holding it horizontally, right? And you wouldn't have to actually press any buttons. You're like, oh, what's that? Lift up the gamepad, look at it, and and you could still play the game normally by just looking over the the gamepad and at the TV. So like it wouldn't actually be you wouldn't have to step away from your sort of combat mode to initiate scanning mode. All you do hold up the gamepad, look around it, 
whenever you're interested in something. Right. You know, if we're we're taking inspiration from other games, you know, I happen to know this other game called Hotel Mario. You could use the Wii Pad to slam doors closed so that you can clear each of the hotels. That would be a great idea too. <laughs> That's yeah. I don't know how how you would do that on the gamepad. I mean, that would work just, well with the just throw games. your gamepad across the room. Or slam it, <laughs> yeah. like, go to your house, go somewhere in your house where there's a door, and just slap the gamepad repeatedly on against the door. <laughs> hey, it's the future, man. Mm. It's the future. It may be gimmicky, but yeah. it's the future. There were no yeah. gimmicks on the CDI, I let you know. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> hey, here's one thing that I actually um, want to talk about, about the CDI. Because I meant, I wanted to make this an article for CDI month, but I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe I'll write it. Maybe someone else will write it, but I doubt it. So I want to talk about it here. Good, because this is, an ex this is a, a subject area that I'm an expert at. Okay, that's good, yeah. So in, in Celis Adventure... Oh, that game. Okay. I, I ruined it sure, right there. Sure, br bring up the... Why don't you just give me a nice paper cut? You know, that's, that's fantastic, <laughs> hombre. Yeah. So in Celis Adventure, I think... What a lot of people want from Zelda Wii U is exactly what Zelda Adventures, Zelda's Adventure is. You have one, you have voice acting, you have photorealistic graphics, and you can play a Zelda. Like, have, haven't you noticed, like, you know, a lot of Zelda fans actually want all of these three things? These are pretty amazing features. Do you think that they'll try to impress us with something like that? Maybe they won't have all, um, like amazing gamepad features. Maybe they'll try to draw us in with like, oh, Zelda has voice acting now. Mm. Or we're going to have photorealistic graphics because that's what everyone wants. I think if they came out with a sequel to Zelda's Adventure, they would make quite the impression, my boy. Mm. Hmm. Quite the impression. I disagree. I think all of those things, well, other than being able to play as Zelda, mm. I think voice acting and... Uh, Photorealistic graphics have no place in the series, personally. Well, well I'm glad that Cody's in here because he would like fight you. Really? For, like another? Yeah, no. He clearly to we that. need no. animated graphics in your cutscenes. <laughs> that is what we really need. Like you get rid of the photorealism thing. They should. But you know what they should do? They should adapt the Zelda manga into an anime and make that the cutscenes of the video game. I'm selling copies right now. I'm selling millions. We we could make games Zelda. together, you and I. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we could make a development studio in my castle tomorrow if you wanted. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Partnership. We'll sign the contracts and everything. Let's get it let's get it done. Sounds fantastic. Sweet. Awesome. <laughs> but what I'm thinking is this, right? <laughs> I'm thinking voice acting. Let's say they do voice acting like Metroid Prime 3 did it. Where Link doesn't talk. Because that would be boring. Around here. He certainly was never boring in my castle. Well, he was bored. Maybe just so. saying. He, he was <laughs> yeah, boring. Yeah. Bored all the time. Just not boring. What I wonder is, could they use the gamepad in a way to sort of interact with other characters? Like, let's say you, you, you come up to a character and they speak to you. And you, ha you have voice acting and everything, like in, in Metro Prime, where, mm -hmm. where they speak to you, but the, the character you're playing isn't speaking back. So you use the gamepad somehow, and you whenever you go up to an NPC, you pull up the gamepad, and the gamepad like recognizes the character you're looking at, and the character's face pops up on the, on the gamepad screen, and you initiate a conversation that way. So you can still, like, you don't have to stop and talk to someone where the game kind of pauses and it gets this sort of, like, you know, uh, text that you have to scroll through. Right. Instead, it pops up on the game. So pad. the conversation actually entirely happens on the gamepad while you're still, you know, you can still run around. But And there's no and magic can... sword involved? Not necessarily, <laughs> no. But maybe, I don't know. Uh, that is a later. crazy idea. <laughs> but I'm, I'm thinking I, I, that's just a crazy idea on top of my head but maybe the way you interact with people could just be on the gamepad like you walk up to a person, you press a button 
and they start talking to you on the gamepad and you get to you know select different uh conversation right. options and, and things like that on the gamepad while you you can still walk around so what you could do essentially is if you have a side quest someone's like oh help me find you know my apples i dropped them so you run around in this little village or whatever and you still have the conversation on the screen and you pick up an apple and it's like hey i found an apple and it's like oh that, that's you. a very good link impression by the way <laughs> well, <thank you. laughs> i i and I yeah can't... and so like you, you converse with other people on the on the gamepad and maybe because this is an, another thing that happens in a lot of other games and in Zelda too where you walk around in the world right and then you'll get someone talking to you, like Navi, like, hey, or maybe like in, in like between worlds, you get Hilda, and she's like, hey, you know, this is this place. So when, instead of interrupting the gameplay, uh... when you enter the graveyard, when you enter the graveyard, you'll get a thing on the gamepad. You can still uh... run around and explore the gamepad, but on the, like, no, you can still explore on the TV. You can run around, you can explore the But then the on the gamepad. On the gamepad. You'll get information about right. the place, like someone telling you about it. And it doesn't have to be, you know, so interrupting, like, you know, like fire comes up. Hey, this seems to be a graveyard. I calculate a 90% possibility that someone's buried here. <laughs> Instead, all of that information is on the touchscreen, not disrupting oh, the oh, gameplay. Oh, oh. That I like. See, I was, I was not yeah. quite with you up until you said that. Now, I like that. Yeah. Because uh, I'm, thinking to, That's I'm good. thinking to myself... It needs to add something to that makes the gameplay more it natural needs, and smooth. Yeah, and that does. Exactly. So it sounds yeah. like you're case, removing beautiful cinematics from your game. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I am skeptical here. <laughs> There's that. I mean, that's that's essentially what we're talking about. I mean, the gamepad already we've seen it removing things so much, but in a good way. Like instead of pausing it to bring up your map, you have the map on the gamepad already. We've seen that happening. Yeah. And I think that's that's what they made with the DS games a lot of times. And I think that's what that's what they should really that's what they can improve on and should improve on going forward. They should look at the gamepad as, you know, how many restricting features like pausing and stuff like that can we take away from the, the different pause menus and stuff like that? Because in games like Zelda's Adventure for the CDI, pausing and selecting items and stuff like that was a very tedious process. Isn't that right, my kid? I, tedious? That was what you had to do. It made sense to us. I had a, I had yeah, an idea but... though, just now about that. Um, one thing I, I've noticed uh, since they've started doing um, more stuff with the Wii U, like they they haven't really tapped into it yet, which is what we're talking about. But um, when they did do stuff on like the DS and the 3DS, I'm going to use a link between worlds as an example. Uh, what I found it was actually more annoying to have to use the touch screen to change items I, th I i felt that that was not as streamlined as it could be or as people thought it would be by using the touch screen and not really interrupting the game although in that's, the only between that's worlds, what pause menus are for it does pause uh and you can use the you know the control stick to actually select through them yeah but it's a bad example but you get what i'm trying to say right if it was just you yeah. had to use the touch screen it would be kind of Annoying, but I had an idea. Instead of using the touchscreen to actually click items and move them or whatever, um, just use it as a display. Instead of bringing up your mm -hmm. item circle, like in Twilight Princess or whatever, or in Skyward Sword, instead of bringing that up yeah. in front of your gameplay, have it just on the t on the uh, the touchscreen all the time. And then have a button where mm -hmm. you hold it and then, like, rotate your control stick or whatever through all the options. Yeah. That would be so quick and easy, just like that. But that's coming from somebody yeah. who's been I... gaming since they were five. Yeah. No, you're right, because I did like both Twilight Princess and, and Skyward Sword in that regard. That that sw switching items, it was it was good. It was it's pretty seamless. You I really like Skyward Sword. You... Once you get used to it, I re it's really fast and seamless. Yeah, and I think... If you combine that with a function to, like in um, A Link Between Worlds, where you can change, like where you can customize your own circle. Yes. That I think would yes. be the best. Kind of like, uh, I'm going to use Ratchet and Clank as an example. Ratchet and Clank, 
uh, has the like the item circle that comes up when you hold down the triangle button. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it's a totally weird game to compare it to, but it is. It, it's exactly what I'm talking about. And you can go into the options and you can change out all of your weapons and items to be wherever you want on that circle. And I think that would benefit from it as well. Zelda would. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree. Um, so, that is a good idea. Maybe I'll have to go tell Phillips about that. <laughs> yeah, you, you should. You should. Phillips need to be notified. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think we've, we've, we've touched upon a lot of ideas. I'm curious just over as to... Over, just over this cast, right? Like, just for these um, 30, 40 minutes that we've been we talking. We have touched on a lot of... We've touched upon a, a couple of good yeah. ideas. So. I, I'm curious, I'm though. I'm thinking after... I'm curious, though, as to um, what our audience thinks. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, how would you want the game Exactly. To yeah, because we... People... Like, the internet. You guys have awesome ideas. So, I, I would yeah. like to hear from you guys. Yeah. And also, I'm, I'm curious, you know, we came up with a couple of good ideas just, yeah, while we were talking. So I wonder what kind of ideas Nintendo has yeah. come up with during, you They're know. They're smarter than us. Days, weeks, months <laughs> of, of, of thinking about this. Yeah, years even. And it better be better, like. Better than what we're coming they, they up with. They <laughs> better come up with something better than, than what we did. Yeah, I agree. Because uh, if it's worse than what we came up with, you know, during this half hour, then, you know. They, they need to hire us and fire some other people. <laughs> but, but the ideas we come up with, you know, we have to be evolutionary. They have to be better than the ideas from the CDI. And I think that's going to be a challenge. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> They're going to be, be hard-pressed to find something better. So very, <laughs> yes. So, uh, with that said, thanks everyone for, for tuning in to this uh Last CDI month cast, sadly. We, so, we will miss I, I, it so very much. I would. Yeah. So, I, I was hoping, <laughs> oh, I was hoping oh, for... Oh, my uh, boy. <laughs> you want to take it outside? The, the game was, studio that we did not... It, we're not doing it anymore. You want to take this it's outside? It's not going to happen. <laughs> I think you want. I, I, I was hoping for, um, for, for your majesty to, to give us some parting words. Some parting words. Hmm. Wow, way to put me on the spot. However, I think we all need to go and contemplate one deep question. I wonder what's for dinner. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!